Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're going to be talking about Tesla's battery costs. We also have a new study from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, some news on the Model 3 out of China, a security breach that has impacted Tesla, and a couple other stories as well. A little bit quieter of a day in the market today, Tesla finishing down 0.8% to $668.06. That compared to the Nasdaq down just four one hundredths of a percent. The big macro news today is of course the passing of the stimulus relief bill in Congress. President Biden is scheduled to sign that into law then on Friday. All right, so I think the most discussed news on Tesla today is around battery costs. Care and Energy Research Advisors published a research report on battery costs in the industry. This got picked up by CNBC and a couple other outlets today. They estimate Tesla's battery costs to be at $142 per kilowatt hour at the cell level versus the industry at $186 per kilowatt hour. Then they also cite GM at $169 per kilowatt hour. They also said that they believe over time through 2030 that General Motors will close that gap and be close to cost parity with Tesla by the end of the decade, saying, quote, GM is fully committed and is taking this complete integrative approach, which is going to allow it to be very close to Tesla, although the scale still isn't in the same ballpark as what Tesla is planning, end quote. Okay, so as you might have guessed, I don't fully agree with this analysis. Let's start off with the sell cost there. They're estimating $142 per kilowatt hour. That doesn't really check out with the math that we've heard Elon Musk walk through. So there was an interview back in November where Elon talked about battery costs, saying that, quote, the long-term goal would be to try to get to a cost per kilowatt hour of perhaps around $50 or $55 at the cell level, end quote. Then he went on to talk about the things that Tesla is doing, which they had announced at Battery Day, to try and get the cost per kilowatt hour down by 56%. Now, when Elon gave this $50 to $55 per kilowatt hour target, it's possible that he was talking even more long term than the things they talked about at Battery Day. But given the context, I think that's pretty unlikely. So if he is talking about their $50 to $55 target, and that's where they go after this 56% cost decrease, that math implies current costs of $114 per kilowatt hour to $125 per kilowatt hour at the cell level. And that's probably the most conservative math you could do on it because of that 56% cost reduction, 7% of that is actually from cell to vehicle integration, the structural battery. So there might not actually be cell level savings for that step, in which case it's just a 49% savings. So if the cost reduction at the cell level is then just 49%, that would imply costs at the cell level of $98 to $108 per kilowatt hour as a starting point. An estimate in that range also fits much better with previous comments that have been made by Tesla. For example, here is what Elon Musk said about Tesla's battery cell costs back at the annual shareholder meeting in June of 2018, so almost three years ago. Yeah, I mean, we're, we think at the cell level, probably we can uh, do better than $100 per kilowatt hour, maybe later this year, uh, depending upon what, on commodity prices. If commodity prices are roughly where they are today, then we'll probably do better than $100 kilowatt hour at the cell level. Okay, so Elon's saying there that they would probably get below $100 per kilowatt hour at the cell level at the end of 2018, and yet this research group is estimating Tesla to still be at somehow $142 per kilowatt hour. If Tesla even at that point in time had been at $142 per kilowatt hour, I doubt Elon Musk would have been estimating that they'd be below $100 per kilowatt hour at the end of the year. Elon might be a little bit aggressive sometimes, but that would be an estimate for a 30% drop over the course of a few months on batteries, a thing they've literally spent a couple of decades trying to lower the cost on. It just doesn't really make any sense. Tesla was almost certainly below $142 per kilowatt hour when Elon made those comments. If we look at commodity prices, as he mentioned, that year they did continue to drop throughout the end of the year. And even now, if we look at cobalt, lithium, aluminum, all those materials are cheaper today than they were when Elon said that. Nickel is the only one that is a little bit more expensive than it was at that point in time, not a whole lot. And at battery day, it was pretty much the same price as it was back in June of 2018. So then you might say, well, Tesla's probably actually way below $100 per kilowatt hour at the cell level today if they were trying to get there back in 2018. But something else they said at Battery Day in September, I think also makes this estimate reasonable. Elon Musk said, quote, and we need to do something about this curve. The curve of the cost per kilowatt hour of batteries is not improving fast enough. So we've given this a lot of thought over many years to say, okay, how can we radically improve the cost per kilowatt hour curve? It's been somewhat flattening out actually, in recent years, end quote. And then Drew Buglino added, quote, yeah, I mean, early growth was promising, but you can see we're kind of plateauing. So that's what's motivating us to rethink how cells are produced and designed, end quote. So everything here fits with the scenario of Tesla flattening out somewhere around $100 per kilowatt hour at the cell level, then at battery day, outlining the steps that they believe can improve beyond that. 
that then lowers their cost by about 50% to what Elon has said here is the long-term target of $50 to $55 per kilowatt hour. As for the comparison with GM, last year GM presented their battery strategy at GM EV Day. I did a whole video about that at the time, so I will link to that if you want more information on their strategies. I don't see them being cost competitive with Tesla for a number of reasons. Scale was mentioned there. Degree of partnership will be an element, so GM is investing in battery cell production, but they're doing that as a joint effort with LG. Tesla will be doing it internally, but also with additional partners to provide additional supply. So that is a key difference. And then GM is also very focused on modularity, which as I said in that video, I think is going to result in some compromises to both cost and energy efficiency. So it's not necessarily just about cell cost. It's about how the dollars translate into range for the vehicle. I think Tesla's the only one that's approaching that problem so holistically. All right, next up here, we've got an interesting study that was published this month by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, better known as the IIHS. I think Tesla already first noticed this about drivers' situational awareness and how that is impacted by having an assisted driving system turned on. The testing parameters were a little bit humorous here. They strapped an oversized pink teddy bear to the back of a vehicle and then had that vehicle overtake the vehicles in the study during about an hour of drive time on three separate instances. And then after the drive, they asked participants about how many times they saw the bear and about various landmarks and things like that. Well, I'm not sure I would use landmarks to measure situational awareness while driving, because that's not really necessarily relevant to the driving task. This test in particular wasn't really meant to measure engagement with an assisted driving system. It was meant to measure varying degrees of awareness. So the IIHS writes, quote, Our data suggests that level 2 driving automation has the potential to improve a driver's situational awareness once he or she is familiar with the technology, although it does not guarantee it. Unfamiliar drivers, however, appear to have even more difficulty maintaining situational awareness when using the system than when driving without it. On average, participants who were familiar with the Level 2 systems showed the highest degree of situational awareness about the bear when using the system. Unfamiliar participants who drove the system had a moderate situational awareness, and unfamiliar participants who drove with the system on demonstrated the lowest situational awareness." End quote. So over the years, many people have been extremely critical of autopilot as a driver assist system, saying that it makes the vehicle less safe. And the argument against that is that no, it allows you to focus on the more important things that are happening around you versus having to be so critically focused on one part of the driving task. The data here from IIHS, albeit this is just one test, does support that train of thought. However, as I said, this isn't about driver engagement. So IIHS has also found and previously published reports about driver engagement decreasing with assisted driver systems, which could then potentially become more dangerous than not using the system at all. I've always thought this to be a pretty bad argument though. Assisted driving is a tool. Just like any other tool, if you don't use it correctly, it could be dangerous. However, if they're used properly, they add value. And in this case, add safety. And that's what this IAHS study supports. So I think it's a good one to have in the back pocket if you ever get into those discussions. All right, next up here, we've got an update out of China. I'm not sure this is exactly news because I think this was widely expected. It's a little bit tough to keep track of these things, but Tasmanian is reporting that the China Ministry of Industry and Information Technology has included the Model 3 SR Plus on the new energy vehicle tax-free vehicle catalog, which means it will be exempted from purchase tax. I kind of thought this already was the case. My understanding is that that purchase tax is waived if the purchase price of the vehicle is below 300,000 yuan. So I think this is more of a confirmation than anything, but anyway, that saves about 16,000 yuan or about 2,400 US dollars. But if the purchase price via options goes above that 300,000 level, then I believe that purchase tax comes back in. So this is beneficial for Tesla on that lower end, but it does make it a little bit more difficult to manage the lineup as it creates that extra incentive to opt for that standard range vehicle. Next up is a report from Bloomberg on a security breach that has impacted Tesla and a number of other companies. This was first published yesterday, it looks like updated today, but essentially a group of hackers gained access to an enterprise security company, Verkata, and they were able to access the live video stream from 150,000 Verkata cameras. Some of those cameras, 222 to be exact, were being used by Tesla, but obviously a huge number of companies there impacted, police departments, hospitals as well. So certainly nothing Tesla specific here, nothing to do with cameras in Tesla vehicles. These are security cameras for things like assembly lines. So obviously a huge concern here for Verkata, but as far as Tesla goes, not much they could have done other than somehow have the foresight to work with a different company instead. So just wanted to cover that because I did see a couple of articles on it today. Next up here, we have some more news on Tesla in India. This seemingly is a never ending story. Now we've got a new state minister chiming in from Maharashtra saying that he wants to clarify that Tesla has not opened its production unit in Karnataka and that, quote, 
Based on the response to its e-vehicles, Tesla will finalize its production unit plan in India. The state government is discussing possibilities of the company opening the unit in Maharashtra. End quote. So basically, we still don't know what Tesla's plans are. They're likely still evaluating. All right, lastly for today, we'll just end on kind of a not so serious note. This is a survey that was first done by Escalant and then published here by Car and Driver, surveying people on their car purchasing decisions, particularly related to electric vehicles. And the takeaway here is pretty funny. Car and Driver recaps it by saying, quote, most people in the auto industry assume Tesla buyers are drawn to the brand's high-tech image or are fans of its mercurial CEO, Elon Musk. But a new survey from research firm Escalant suggests that's far from the real story, end quote. If we look at what Escalant says are the top responses for what drives consideration of Tesla in particular, they say range, performance and acceleration, styling, build quality, and vehicles are new and different. I assume that last one would be sort of the placeholder for Tesla's technology. I would have to guess that would fall within the top five responses as well. But I just love how Car and Driver phrased that up. Most people in the auto industry assume Tesla buyers are drawn to the brand's high-tech image or are fans of Elon Musk. That must be it. Not that Tesla is superior on pretty much every electric vehicle metric there is and has the best technology. Nah, it's probably just the brand and Elon. It's a silly question. Nobody thinks they buy products only because of the brand. Maybe a few people would admit to that, but a brand is just there as a symbol to represent all those attributes that people respond to. Anyway, the other element of the survey that was highlighted is that Elon Musk is actually seen as one of the top reasons to not consider a Tesla by the respondents, ranking for non-EV owners just behind range and purchase price. Now, I'm sure both of those are pretty obvious, so we don't know exactly how far below Elon Musk came in on that survey. Could be quite a ways. But as we can see from the reasons to consider a Tesla, Elon Musk is not even in that category, so I don't think many people are buying their electric vehicles based on who the CEO of the company is. Sure, there will be some people that do make that decision, but most people just want the best car that they can get for the least amount of money. All right, that's where we'll leave it for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Thursday, March 11th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.